All right, it looks like we're live. So, hi everybody, and welcome to KikFu, and uh, I hope you're all excited about the training today. Um, we're going to just jump right into it since it's time to get started anyway, and I'll do an introduction and uh, get going. Uh, for those of you that are new, uh, before we get started, there is a chat box on the right hand side of your screen, so you should be able to. Um, Go on there, chat amongst yourselves, ask any questions that you might have throughout the training, and we will try to get as many of these questions answered. We have so much that we are trying to cover today, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so um, yeah, hopefully we'll get through everything, and and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get you guys some really good information today. Talk so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we will pause for just uh, a, a second for editing, and then we will uh, go ahead and get started. Oh, before we get started again, um, make sure there is a giveaway that we're doing, major, major giveaways that we're doing. So um, down below, I believe, no, there's a link in the chat. We, we're doing a different system now. Mm -hmm. There's a link in the chat box that... Um, that you should be able to um, find the the link to go and enter for the giveaway. So make sure you go and do that. Um, I think it's up there. If not, Bobby will put it up there. So because Bobby's good that way. So <laughs> okay. <what> he's doing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I'm just kind of trying to figure out and learn this new system here. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. You guys are all. <laughs> better. Well, we're, we hope that it's making things better, you know. I, I know that people don't really like change a lot, you know. Whenever Facebook changes, it's like, Arr, I hate you, Facebook. Oh, yeah. You know, so I hope you guys aren't like, ooh, I hate you, cake foo. So <laughs> we really are trying to make it better. <laughs> totally. So, <laughs> all right. Okay, so yeah, pause for just a few seconds and then we'll get started. Hello everybody, welcome to Cake Foo. Uh, we are really happy that you're here today. We're really excited about today's training. Uh, we are celebrating. Liz Merrick and, and I both have our Facebook pages for our business. Uh, Liz Merrick has Artisan Cake Company. I have Cake Foo. And we have both within the last uh, week or so reached our 20,000 Facebook fans and yay! <laughs> We're really excited about that and so we wanted to do something kind of special today and um, share some good information with you and do some really cool giveaways. So um, yeah, uh, we have Liz Merrick here. Hi Liz! Hi guys! Hi everybody! Awesome. And Liz is going to be uh, joining us, sharing a bunch of stuff uh, that, you know, we're, we're going to kind of just pick each other's brains, talk about uh, branding, social media, how to get the clients you want to get, you know, all, all those kinds of things. And so we should be we should be covering a lot today. And so I hope you guys are excited about what we're, we've got to share. And uh, I hope that... Uh, yeah, I, I hope that you guys really enjoy this and and uh, thank you. I this is this is the biggest thing is thank you. We want to thank you guys for being such great fans and such great supporters of both Artisan Cake Company and of Cake Fu. It's so um, it's crazy to me to think that there's twenty thousand people out there who like like the you know even just even like no are aware that we're in existence or that there's 20,000 people on Facebook I don't know it's just like such a big number it just it is seems crazy <laughs> yep it's it is huge isn't it and yeah, you know and lot. yeah it's just gonna grow from there it's so cool <laughs> so yeah um we are gonna start off oh, before we get started I want you guys to know for those of you that have just joined us we are doing a major uh, set of giveaways. Twenty this, uh, giveaways. Woo! Yay! <laughs> okay, so we're not giving all of them away today. Right. Um, just so you know, we're we're giving away um, throughout the next month. We will be giving away, you know, between three to five ish giveaways every week. You know, so depending on the week. Uh, you're going to want to go on uh, every week, enter and 
and try to, to win some of these awesome giveaways. And we'll post so, links to the giveaways on our pages. So definitely, if you haven't, like Cake Foo's page like, uh, and subscribe to Cake Foo's page. Subscribe to Artisan Cake Company's page so that whenever we post information about the giveaways, like you're, you know, like you'll get a notification. Exactly, exactly. And also, another thing that we have, uh, we definitely have the Facebook pages. If you haven't gone on and, and liked them, and, and like Liz said, subscribe, because there is a difference between liking and subscribing. Yeah. Liking does not necessarily mean that you're going to always see what we have to, to offer. So if you subscribe, though, we will always show up in your news feed every time we post something. So... Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that you actually go on and subscribe to um, both of those. And the another thing, I believe Liz Merrick, Liz, you have a um, an email list that you send out emails to people. Is that right? That's my newsletter on my website, artisankatecompany.com, and you can subscribe to my newsletters. And I hardly ever send out newsletters. It's always just like really important information like a class coming up or like you know a real a, a new YouTube tutorial that's free or something like that so it's not Spanish stuff <laughs> yeah good good we send out uh, um, emails a little more regularly because we have our trainings every week we send right. out the the information for the trainings every week so um, you'll get quite a few more emails from from cake Foo than you would artists and cake company but go and sign up for the email lists for for both of those so that you guys can be aware of what's going on and in case you do miss it in your Facebook news feed you'll get the emails mm -hmm. and so yeah definitely go and and do that um, so yeah Go ahead, and there should be a link for you guys in the chat box to um, to take you over to register for the giveaways. Um, we are are not going to give anything away today right away because we want to build up the the numbers and and you know make it make it more exciting so that uh, you guys can can all have a chance so everyone can have a chance to to you know be a part of this giveaway. So um, this week, you you want to tell what the um, the giveaways are, or do you want me to? You can tell them. I mean. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to, uh, well, I, yeah. Anyway, You're okay, host. so. <laughs> <Don't try. laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to be giving away four things this week. We're going to be giving away a Cake Foo membership mm -hmm. um, valued at $99. So it's a really, really cool giveaway. That right there alone is cool. Um, and also, Liz Merrick has her um, digital cake sketching, which is I, it is grow it's growing massively. Yeah, there's quite so a few fast. templates in there now. Yeah, <laughs> Dan's working on more. He's working on some custom brushes too. So yay! Oh yay! I'm so excited for that. These custom brushes are going to be so cool. I know about them. They're so cool. <laughs> They're <amazing. laughs> been showing me some stuff and I'm like <laughs> yay oh I'm so excited for that we'll have to do another another training when the the brushes come out so yeah. but we're going to be giving away the whole set of the the digital templates that Liz has created um, there are the the actual cake templates that you can design and then there are images that you can use you know flower images um, lace images you know th things like that 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 you can add to the the cake design to to make wonderful amazing images to share with uh, your clients and it really just adds to the professionalism of things just amazing and we have a, a digital cake sketching group mm -hmm. that is so I it just every day we get dozens of people wanting to join this group it is I love to see all the pictures everybody posts of their cakes like I'm just amazed sometimes it's like my first cake sketch and I'm just like that's your first cake sketch mine <laughs> horrible and they're like oh I'm so embarrassed it's awful I'm just like whatever <laughs> it really is fun to see there there's a lot of sharing a lot of information that goes on over there so um, if you do win or decide to purchase this uh, digital cake sketching uh, thing you can um, go ahead and 
find our Facebook group and, and join our Facebook group. It's the Digital Cake Sketching Facebook right. group. Really cool stuff. I mean, I when Liz introduced it, I was like, oh my gosh, I have got to do this. I have got to be a part of this. And so we've been really, really happy about it. Um, and you can find all of that on our uh, on the Cake Foo uh, Marketplace, right. um, so on the website. So we will be giving away a whole set of that. I think the value of that is uh, around $50. Yeah. So really nice set also. And then uh, Liz and I are going to be giving away something that I think is really fun. Um, we, we offer this, both of us offer this through, um, I offer through Cake Foo. Uh, Liz offers it through her patron uh, website uh, that she does. And... Um, I think they're really cool, <laughs> but it's a, a mentorship where you can actually uh, come online and we'll be face-to-face, one-on-one, -on -one, be able to talk about anything you want, cake-related. You know, so it can be a customized class, so if you want to talk about you know, sculptures or modeling or hand painting, whatever you want, we can basically talk whatever, you know, it's, it's like a one-on-one -on -one class with your teacher through the magic of the internet. Yeah, it's super, super, super cool. Okay, so um, I'm not sure what Liz has hers valued at, but uh, we we have ours set at ninety nine dollars for mm -hmm. the mentorship. Mm -hmm. So I I I will assume that uh, the value of hers is um, I don't know roughly the same. I don't, I don't know. know. It's like what kind of value do you put on a one on one class? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it's really hard to decide on, on stuff yeah, like that's that. Like, and, um, I want to start doing more of those uh, for mm -hmm. people because there's been a, a real interest in, in um I, I did my first one with PJ Jenkins and it was really fun and, I, and she asked some great questions. Some of them were really simple just like how do you store your cake tools so they're not like all over the kitchen. And I was like oh well let me show you my kitchen and we just I kind of like took my my uh, computer and just like walked around the kitchen and had her look at it and everything so it's like what you want to know I, I mean I might if I put together a class it might not be necessarily exactly the information you want to know so it's nice to be like this is the exact questions I want to know you know so yeah uh, yeah and I, I think that there's a real value in that because like you said it's it's what you want to know and right. And so you can create this whole, um, you know, kind of a one-on-one -on -one class based on what you want to know and not what we feel like, uh, I don't know, maybe everyone wants to hear, you know? Totally. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it definitely is, is a good thing. It's a really good thing. And, yeah, I've done, I've done a couple, and they are they're really fun. I, you know, I just – and, it, you know, not only is it a, a class, but you, you actually get to – you know, become friends with this person. You know, it's I I love it. I think it's really fun to to be able to get to know people that are in the industry and that, you know, the up and coming cake decorators. <laughs> yeah, so, totally. Yeah, it's really fun. So yeah, definitely, we will be giving uh, one for me and one for Liz and um, and all kinds of other exciting giveaways. After yeah, that, so. exactly. That's just this week. Yeah, that's just this so, week. <laughs> yeah. We've got uh, lots of items, lots of things that are coming up that we will be giving away, and we will announce them every week, and you'll have a chance to, to go on and, and enter these giveaways. So, yay! So exciting. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, go ahead, and we're going to jump into our training portion and uh, try and cover as much as we can because um, I think that this kind of information is really important to... Um, everybody, not just beginning cake decorators or someone that's just wanting wanting to or, you know, just starting a, a cake business. I think this is something that everybody can work on, including me. You know, I, I think that working through social media, you know, the social media is constantly changing, constantly coming out with new ideas, new things, and it's always a good thing to stay on top of that. So, um, so yeah, we're going to start by talking about branding and creating a brand for yourself and why you need to create a brand for yourself and how to create a brand for yourself. So um, Liz, you wanted to talk about um, basically how to, to start your own brand. Right. 
And um, I think that word can be really confusing for some cake decorators. And I, I forget sometimes that I have a background in graphic design and marketing. And so a brand is a very clear idea in my mind. Um, and it, but, but it's not for everybody. But it really is not complicated. And I try to explain a brand as the face that you are presenting to the world. And by face, I mean the style of your company. Are you like a funky, playful, fun like cake company? Do you like really specialize in little cute toppers like Mimi Cafe, you know? Or do you really like to do elegant wedding cakes? Um, that's kind of like the first step in defining your brand is, is what sort of style do you see yourself as as a company. Sometimes it's in your, a lot of your name explains that, you know. And um, the second is what does your logo, the way you post your photos, the way your website looks, how does that enforce your brand. So the idea is that whenever you post a photo of your cake or um, you uh, make design a cake, People can tell that it's yours before you even, you know, if there's no logo on there, they can be like, oh, that really looks like this style, this person's style. Like um, Timbo, I always know it's his cakes. Like he has a really distinct style, a really distinct brand. And a lot of that comes from, he, he, he uh, ha is an artist, you know, as well, who does like kind of graffiti type artwork. And it really comes out in his cakes, the way he does it. So... Um, that's something that you can work on by looking at other people's brands. So when I very first started coming up with a design idea for my, my brand, I really looked up to a few other cake decorators and I thought, well, why do I like them? And it was one of the things was their cakes are super clean. There's like no flaws on them. They have really sharp edges. Um, they're, they're, they've got very specific color schemes and their logo is always like in the upper left or they, their website is very like light. You know, it's very, very simple. So I'm not copying their brand, but I'm basically using I, I'm doing research basically saying, okay, I have a tendency to want to make my website really busy and very, like have all information and tons of details and tons of content, but that interferes with the brand that I'm shooting for, so I have to like stop myself and say, okay, I want my website to be mostly photos and I want it to be very light in color and very simple and clean and modern looking because that's how I want people to see me. I don't want them to see me as a sort of overly cluttered, clunky, you know, website or something. So that's that's kind of how you can get started with defining your brand. I think that's I think that's really important. Um, one thing about um, building a brand that that I have um, thought was kind of important is um, more. Th it's it's not just about the cake, like you said. It's you know you you want to your pictures. You want them to be you know so that people can recognize your cake. Right. Um, and and your website. You want it to all be you know the style that you that you like. Um, I think the one thing that I think is important is putting a face to your brand as well as the cake. You know, I I think it's important. I mean, if you look at all of the the top cake decorators in the industry, there is a definite face mm -hmm. to to them and um and and getting out there as far as as, you know, putting yourself out there. I think that's something that Liz, you have done so well <laughs> is getting yourself out there and um and don't be afraid to to go, you know, to get out there and, you know, post pictures of yourself with the right. cake or working on the cake or, you know, things like that. Just you want to be somebody who is, you know, a, a part of the industry. Yeah, and people like to see that stuff so, with social media how it is now. I mean, um, they like to see the work in progress. They like to see the behind the scenes. They like to see who you are. I've had um, clients who've contacted me and said, oh, I follow you on Instagram, and I love all the T-shirts you wear. And it's like, oh, that's cool. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of like a very random personal thing that's about me. I, just, I collect T-shirts. And they just thought mm -hmm. that was really, that's why they liked me and wanted to order a cake for me, aside from the fact that I make cakes, you know. So mm -hmm. people like to know who you are and they connect with you. And always remember that when you're posting things on social media that um, everybody can see it. 
<laughs> you are being watched, that yeah. is for sure. When yeah. you rant about things, people don't like that. So, like, uh, you should definitely keep sort of, like, personal outbursts or frustrations in our groups where we do that. <laughs> yeah. There are groups for that. Yes. Yeah, there are groups for that. Because that's important. It is important to be able to vent and stuff. But um, that really turns clients off. You know, no client wants to think that you're frustrated at them or that they that you, they feel like you're an arrogant person. So that's part of your brand. You know, you want to put yourself out there as being, um, you know, very friendly. You're willing to work with the customers. You're you answer questions, and you never are frustrated by silly questions. You know, so <laughs> yeah, be aware. Absolutely. Be aware of yeah. that. Yeah, definitely being part of, you know, the part of the business and, and showing that there is, you know, definitely someone behind the the cakes that, you know, I, I just think that's kind of important. Um uh, another thing that I that I um think about when, when it comes to branding and these aren't the really important things, but they really do add to and help. Um one would be, you know, having like a little sticker that you can put on your cake boxes when you deliver them that has your little logo on it mm -hmm. or you know some some ribbon uh, customized to go around the base of your cake that has your logo on it or something like that you know just just little logos here and there that um, that kind of show people hey this is you know because when I think about a really high-end brand I think of, of you know let's say a Gucci purse mm -hmm. you're gonna see a logo Yes, you know, and and people like that logo. They they will pay money to be able to show that logo. Any kind of clothing that is a high end brand is going to have that logo on there, and people are excited about that, and they want to show off that logo. And so, you know, to to have a cute little sticker on your cake box that says, "Look, this came from Artisan Cake Company. I'm so, uh, you know, look at what I bought. I bought I this totally cool thing." That That's even something that I haven't done yet because um, you know, the, like brandy even like the the way that you present yourself to the world is constantly you're it's something you're always working on and constantly building on and it's like I work really hard at making sure I I watermark all of my things online and I have a very strong online branding like presence for myself but I don't necessarily work as hard with my my um I don't know real world you're <laughs> offline yeah <laughs> offline is there an offline um, because I because I work from home, I I am not that big. Like I'm not a bakery, you know. Like I'm a storefront, and so I hadn't really thought of it being like that important. But it really is. So that's definitely something that I need to work on as well. I need to get like T-shirts for myself and for my assistants, so that we when we go places to deliver cakes. We, we're advertising the business when we bring cakes to places. We ha I, I need to get a sticker for my car so that people see who I am when I show up. I mean, all these little things that I don't really think about that I'm just like, oh, I need to do. I need to do real life branding as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the real life branding I think is important, but um, I think you also want to go back to, I, like you said at the very beginning, is researching you know what what you want your brand to be and make sure everything that you um, that you acquire as far as branding fits into that you know you don't want to have you know let's say this crazy you know I, I don't I don't know let's say an art deco design to your stickers and then on, on your you know your Facebook or on your website you've got these elegant flowery whatever right. You know, I, you want it to all kind of go together. You, yeah, and you, you want, want to be able to be known for, hey, I see that image right there, that style right there. I know that that is. Um, yeah, and you know. and there's um and there's a. Uh, I, I think cake decorators are like artists you, that's easy to get kind of lost in like, oh, I really like this style some days. I really like these elegant, frou-frou-y kind of designs for a logo. And then the next day you're working on your website and you're like, oh, I want this really clean and modern design. And it's like you really need to be consistent all along. Um, because even even I, I mean, I do all kinds of different cakes. Like I kind of, you know, that I kind of just have to. But the kind of cakes that I advertise myself are doing is the really creative ones, the ones that I would say are more on the rustic country kind of side of things as far as wedding cakes go, and not so much the clean, simple tons of roses and 
modern cakes, not because I don't like them, but it's just that's what I prefer to do. So that's sort of what I advertise myself as. So um, the majority of brides who contact me for cakes, they always want ruffles, they always want sugar flowers, they always want a pretty topper or, or an interesting stacked design because that's how I advertise myself as somebody who specializes in those types of cakes. That doesn't mean that I don't do modern cakes, I just don't post those. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Okay, and then um, let's go on to like our marketing. Okay. So um, you... This is something that, as far as um, the actual cake business side of things and, and trying to get customers for a, a cake business, I don't have a whole lot of information on that. So Liz has quite a bit of information on that. Um, since, I, since I have moved into you know, the, the online thing, I don't do you know, the, the marketing for brides and things like that. So I, I do have a little bit of input, but uh, Liz has most of this. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so yeah, where, where do you, I mean, because marketing can be very expensive, and I think that that's something that intimidates a lot of cake decorators when they're starting a business or trying to grow their business. I mean, because there's, you know, there's magazines, there's newspapers, there's, you know, the bridal shows, there's the online, you know, websites that you can, you can pay in tons of money to every avenue. So which ones are the best? Which ones do, do you recommend? Which ones do you stay away from? I think that marketing it has changed so much in the last, even just like five years. It's changed, it changes a lot. And, um, I, I find I've tried a lot of different types of marketing. I'm always kind of like trying out new things. I've done like the online bridal websites like Not.com or Wedding Wire. I've done um, I've bought ad space within magazines that are like big magazines and also local magazines. I've done radio stuff. Like I've tried all of these different things, and um, I it's it's uh, it it really depends on who you're trying to reach. So if you are really specializing in wedding cakes and you want more wedding cake uh, orders, first off, you have to have a really good website. And that is where you're going to get the majority of your orders from. So what is a good website? A good website is something that has really nice pictures and is very easy to navigate. It should be mostly just pictures of your cakes. There shouldn't really be a lot of information aside from a contact page, maybe a little bit about you, but really the, just some really high quality nice pictures of your work. And the second thing is, is you have to have a blog, which sounds hard. <laughs> you know, that sounds really hard to do, but blogs are so easy to do and are really important for your website because Google, which, you know, decides how how well you rank on um, you know, amongst other cake decorators, they value websites that update their website often. And the way that you can do that is by either uploading pictures of your cakes frequently or you know, doing double duty and not only uploading recent pictures of your cakes, but also blogging about a recent picture of a cake. Or you could blog about a local, you know, event that's cake related, or you could blog about a friend's cake that you really like. But that just looks really important to Google. They, they, they scan your website and they, every time you blog, they say, this person is a expert in their field in this area. So when somebody types in, you know, wedding cakes for Portland, Oregon, my, my website pops up above others because I blog all the time. I'm always updating my website. I'm always adding new information. So, and I'm using important words within my website, like, you know, bridal shows, wedding cakes, this kind of wedding cake, rustic wedding cakes, that kind of stuff. And um, they're just really simple blog posts. They're like 500 words, couple of photos. That's it. I do a couple of months. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I have huge breaks when I get really busy, but it's um, it's it only takes like five or ten minutes to do, and for the value that you get, I mean, it's either spend five or ten minutes blogging or thousands of dollars in ad space, and it's like, I mean, it's basically free advertising for you. That's a free thing that you can do yourself that you should make time for. You know, um, the other thing is uh, I get a lot of. I get a lot of um, success from from um, having posts in local magazines, not necessarily 
you know, brides.com or brides magazine. I've never been in brides magazine. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all strive for that. But. <laughs> Someday. But um, the uh, I get I've worked with made connections with local vendors, and the way I've done that is I go to small bridal shows like the ones that only are a couple hundred dollars, and it's not so much about meeting brides. I mean, it's nice, but you can't really depend on that per se. You never know how busy it's going to be. But it is a great opportunity to meet other local vendors, introduce yourself, tell them about your cakes, give them your card, tell them if they ever want to collaborate on a photo shoot that you'd be happy to provide a cake or something that you'd want to work together. Photographers then submit those photos to magazines in hopes that they will be published as well as blogs and things like that. And, and um, now you have a friend. You have a friend in the industry. So they'll refer you to other weddings that they're working at if they like, if they've enjoyed working with you. They'll refer you to brides. Um, if they say, oh, I'm looking for this unique cake design, they're like, oh, I know just the person. You know, I, I met this person at a, at a cake show. And, um, and then when they do, when they are asked to maybe do a photo shoot for a magazine, the, the magazine will say, you know, do you have somebody you want to do the cake for? I mean, it's all about who you know. So making connections with other vendors is very, very important and can be tricky. But you just, you just got to just be friendly and normal. Don't be desperate. <laughs> you know, <Don't. laughs> it, it, it is like that. <laughs> really nice to actually have friends in the industry is, is um, aside from just the benefits of networking and things like that. And then as far as the online marketing, um, Facebook's changed a lot. It's not as important. I don't think it's as effective as, effective as it used to be because uh, they just have changed what people see and what they don't see. So I really, I really feel like Facebook pages are more of a platform to just be connected to each other. Like, you know, I'm connected to you, Amelia. By mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, my Facebook is like my news channel now. Like I just kind of read my my updates from people I subscribe to and I don't really see anything from anything that I don't subscribe to so make sure you're subscribing to the pages you want to see updates from um, but I the thing that I actually have noticed that's been really good for advertising online is Instagram which can be really confusing <laughs> but it's very very easy and I use it all the time almost exclusively I take a picture of in-process photos I take pictures of cakes I've just made on Instagram and there's a feature that on Instagram that you can share to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Flickr, um, uh, all at once. So it's you just put in your hashtags, which you know would be like cake, sugar, things that people would search for within Instagram, and it shares to all of those platforms at once. So it's like, you know, super duper easy. Because I, for one, you know, I never like get on Twitter. I never like go to Flickr, <laughs> but I know some people <laughs> do use those platforms, so it's an easy way to share everything all at once, and I actually get clients through Instagram. I get people who call me and say, I've followed you on Instagram for years, you know, I want you to make me a cake for my son's, you know, birthday or my mom's anniversary or something like that, so way more than Facebook, because Facebook's more like everybody in the world, and Instagram seems to be more like local for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I I agree with uh, you know everything that you've said. I think that um, one thing that as as far as marketing yourself uh, as an actual business, one thing that I can think of is to get an in with other vendors, not just in the cake decorating community, but um, in in your very specific area. I think that that's really important to you know to be able to. Um, Say, say you have a florist that ends up, you know, doing the flowers for a couple of the weddings that you have done a cake for. So, you know, maybe you guys can can work together a little bit um, and introduce each other to the the people that that you bring in, or you know, and just even just being, you know, building a relationship with them, so mm -hmm. that if somebody asks and says. You know, you know, they go to you know the oh the the florist. I I, I can think of florist because we work closely with florists sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, so someone goes to the florist and says, 
I, you know, I haven't, I haven't uh, gone and seen any cake decorators yet. Are there any that you might recommend? Mm -hmm. If they have a relationship with you and trust you as a very good cake decorator and and someone who um, who they they feel is a good you know personality, a good you know a good that business matches their style, their work ethic. Exactly, exactly. Work ethic is very important too. Yeah, and so if they feel like that you know they're good friends with you and that you know maybe you're going to return the favor someday they'll refer you you know they'll say hey you know what I know that you know artisan cake company is is a really awesome awesome you know cake shop you know they've got really awesome cakes and and I I know the you know the decorator personally and she's a great person so definitely go over to her you know so definitely work at building that um, rapport with the other vendors you know but be really careful of you know there are some vendors that will require or expect a kickback of some sort yeah don't no, none of that. Don't fall into that. Don't fall into that. You know, there's no need for for them to to get a percentage of what what you are working so hard to do. You know, I I don't think that they would want to give you a percentage of what they are offering. And so just just stay away from that. I in in my opinion, that's that's to stay away from that. So all right. Um, another thing was, as you're talking about um, Facebook and things like that, um, there are ways to to keep you um, head and, and center and, and in the forefront of Facebook. Right. It's hard to do because Facebook does want to get your advertising money, mm -hmm. and so it, it really is difficult to do. But if you can find the the posts that are are going to be, you know be shared a lot. Um, definitely sharing and liking pictures brings them up to the to the top of the pages and more people are going to see it that way. Right. Uh, so for example, like like Liz said, do do trendy cakes. Do something that, you know, is going to really bring in a lot of likes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it might it might feel like you're posting things and nobody's interacting with you and that can feel very like Frustrating. That can be, feel very frustrating, and that's how Facebook wants you to feel because they want you to to pay to, to get things shared more. But it doesn't take that many likes or comments for things to start being shown to more people because mm -hmm. Facebook does, however, pay it, Facebook pays attention to popular posts. So um, ways that you can uh, sort of build your audience is to make projects that are specifically meant for sharing and, and gaining traffic. This can be something like a tutorial where you do like a little step-by-step -step process on how to make a little minion. I love those little things. They're just like 10 pictures that are all, you, I think they use pick stitch or something, and it's mm -hmm. like this is how I make a, a piece of broccoli that looks realistic. I mean, that's cool stuff. You're not, it doesn't take a ton of time to do, and people love to share that. And always post to your business page. Do not share things from your personal page because your page is hopefully private. <laughs> and if you share things from your personal page, they don't show up on other people's pages. So always be sharing on your business page and then share that post to groups, to other pages, other things like that. And then people will see where it came from and like your page and subscribe or whatever. Mm -hmm. Another thing to make just for fun, can be like uh, copyrighted characters. I don't recommend doing Disney, but let's say you wanted to do like a Minecraft cake or something like that. You're not selling it. You're just making it just for fun, just to post, and then, wow, that's so cool looking. How did you make those squares? Or showing like a hand-painted technique that people don't know about. Um, that kind of stuff. That stuff goes viral. Sometimes the companies themselves will post it on their page because they're just like, wow, you know, I mean, can you imagine making a Minecraft cake and then the Minecraft game is like, look at this amazing cake that this person made. I mean, they love that stuff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of, that kind of stuff yeah. can do a lot of attention. Definitely, definitely. You know, I, I agree with the, you know, the pictures, posting pictures that 
are specifically with the mindset of them going viral. Um, and it, another thing is asking questions and asking for opinions or, you know, make write posts that are going to get people talking, you know, in a good way, <laughs> in a good way. You don't, you don't want the negative attention. But definitely be thinking about, you know, asking a question or, you know, uh, getting some input from people that, you know, that, that people are going to write on this. Um, post you want to you want to be able to it's it's all about getting people to to like and post and comment and share you know and so uh, definitely think about that when you're uh, writing your posts um, and another thing is post regularly um, like like Liz said with with a blog if you post regularly with a blog you're going to be higher ranked in in you know Google searches. And um, you know when when I had my personal cake decorating business page, um, I I wasn't. Um, it was before I was you know a, the national award winning cake decorator, or whatever. But I had gotten to the point where my website was in the in the top two or three you know links on on Google searches when anybody searched for Utah cakes you know or or you know things like that so you want to insert the words that are going to bring in you know the what you what you're looking for if people are going to be searching for your specific area make sure that you're talking about your area make sure you're talking about you know the the cakes in your area and and you know those keywords are, are pretty important but on on Facebook and your other social media sites uh, I would definitely post regularly very regularly because um, the the more often you post the more chance you have of something getting recognized and and people seeing it you know so uh, not just random junk but it, it needs to be you know Good content on a regular basis to to keep your your business in the forefront. Um, I know that you know when I when I have a friend that is on Facebook that I've looked at their page, I've commented. They're more likely to pop up at the top of my newsfeed because Facebook sees that I was interested in what they had to say, and so the next time they have something to say, it just you know happens to show up on on my Facebook feed and so if you can get that interaction and and post regularly you're going to be popping up on other people's Facebook pages more often than if you wait weeks between uh, making your posts and comments so um, we wanted to talk about watermarks mm -hmm. And uh, Liz has a way of, of watermarking through her phone, which I think is super cool. And she's going to uh, kind of explain that a little bit. And then I've got um, some watermarking that I'll show you how to do on the computer. So, Yeah, I use, um, like I said, I use mostly Instagram for um, posting my photos because I was just talking to somebody uh, in the chat room, and it feels like, when you're not doing marketing that it sounds like so much. It sounds like you're doing all of this stuff and it's taking all of this time, but it actually doesn't. I, I actually market the things that I just am already working on, you know? So I might take pictures with my phone of a step-by-step -step process of how to make a, like a face, and then um, and I do that with an app called PicStitch. And then I put my watermark on it and I post it to Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook with all one button. And then I do the same thing with just in process photos. Like yesterday I was working um, at a photo shoot and I took some pictures of some of the things that we were working on during the photo shoot and just posted them to Instagram. And um, that stuff I don't usually watermark. I probably should, but um, the ones that I always do mark, watermark are my cakes. And that um, app is, that I use is, is a free um, app, and there's tons of them on uh, on your phone. Like I have an app, I have an iPhone, but there's other phones, obviously. I don't know if you can see that, but this is like Watermark app right here. And it um, you basically just take a picture with your phone, you upload it into the app, and you have to have a, obviously your watermark on your phone and the way that you do that at least the way that I do it is I emailed myself 
a picture of my watermark and then downloaded it on my phone. Like I opened my email in my phone and downloaded it. Um, but if you don't have a watermark, you have the option of just typing out your email, or your, not your email, but your website. So I could say www.artisankatecompany.com and just you can move it around on your phone wherever, like if I wanted it to be at the bottom or the top or somewhere, save it to my phone and then open it up in Instagram and then post it. So I always do that for like when I deliver a cake or something like that so that if it does get shared, which you would hopefully it would get shared, um, your watermark is on there. And that's really important for people to, it's part of your branding, it's part of your, it also protects you so that if somebody like a, a, a magazine or something sees your cake and they want to publish it, for some reason, magazines are really bad at doing research, <laughs> and they, mm -hmm. well, they 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 could um, blog about it and actually give credit to the wrong person because maybe somebody posted it to their blog, and the magazine thinks it's that blog that made the cake. But Rhea, in reality, it's your it's your cake. So, I mean, you can't stop really people from removing watermarks if they want to be devious like that. But uh, you definitely want to. Um, be, do your due, dil due diligence and uh, be letting people know who you are so that if they want to know, it's they don't have to hunt for it. <laughs> cool. Yes, I, I think that that is, is very important. It's something that I haven't done a lot of um, it, because I, I don't know, I guess I didn't know about you know very much about watermarking when I had my personal cake business, you know, but um, since then, you know, I still do cakes once in a while. I still do them, um, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I guess I, I haven't been working as much on my branding, you know, because I'm not trying to gain the clientele uh, that I used to. Um, but I still should. I still should. So I'm, I've decided that I'm going to start watermarking. So yes. I, I will. <laughs> All right. So I want to show you guys. Um, this is. Yeah, let's see if I can pull this up. I'm going to show you guys a demo of how I do watermarking for uh, my um, for my images. Okay, so we are going to okay. There you guys should be able to see my screen. Um, I use Pixlr.com um, when when I'm doing stuff like this. I well, I Photoshop is probably the best way to go if you have Photoshop, but if you don't, um, there's there's other things that you can can get. Uh, GIMP is one that you can download and, um, and everything, but I like Pixlr because it's just there online and it has, it has, okay, so it's got the Pixlr editor which is very, um, you know, it, if you know how to do photo editing, this is one, the one for you because you can do a lot more. It's a lot more like Photoshop. Uh, the Pixlr Express is like the dumbed down version, easier version, and then the Pixlr Omatic is, yeah, I think it's too, I think it's too dumbed down. I never use that one, <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys the Pixlr Express one because um, I, oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing, <laughs> clicking on the wrong screen. Okay, so we're going to click on the Pixlr, uh, no, the, the Express. And so this is where we're going to upload our picture. You're going to click on where it says Browse, and then you get to find your picture. I'm just going to pick this one right here. It's a picture I did for my little boy last year for his birthday. Oh, isn't he cute? Wow, <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh, look at that little trike. That oh yeah, the little the little tricycle on the the bottom. That was wow. That, that was a fun project. That's crazy. So yeah, thank you. All right, so um, we are going to show you how to put our watermark over it. Whoops, not adjustment. We no, that's right. Yes, you have to come down to adjustment. And we're going to add an image right here. You have to have your your um, logo already ready um, as far as having a, a plain background, like a, not not a plain but a clear background. It needs to be like a PNG file uh, where where there is no background. So I have my logo right here, and I've changed it to black and white so that it's. Um, not going to take away a lot from the picture. And I have to size it down. I explain bit. real quick about the PNG thing. If you uh, 
that's how there that's how the background's transparent is that it's a PNG not a JPEG yes thank you thank you if you can see the you can only see the cake foo and you can see back behind where you know the whole background and so a PNG file allows you to be able to have that clear background a JPEG file you would have white through all of that so um, yeah so we have our Kikfu logo here now, um, but it's pretty intrusive. And you know, you could, if you want to, make it smaller, whatever, and put it down like on the side, and that would give you, you know, a good logo, and and people will notice that it's there. If you want to be really safe, and you feel like you need to have a, a watermark over your actual cake because you're worried about people stealing it, uh, then then there is a way to take your, here, we'll make it bigger again, and you can turn it, you can, you know, whatever. So say we want to have the watermark right over the front of the picture. I, I wouldn't do this because I don't, I don't want to ruin my cake picture. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you decide that this is what you want to do and you're concerned about people stealing your images, you can definitely do this. So come down to where it says opacity and you can just turn that down to as light as you want it to go and so there you can still see um, you can still see the the actual cake but you can see that there is a logo on it also and so people stealing your your cake pictures is gonna be a lot harder to do they can still go through and edit it if they're really good at Photoshop but it it will slow them down for sure. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and apply it like that. If you don't have a logo, let's say let's say we don't have a logo that's uh, fit for doing this, you can type it in. So there are tons of different fonts. I kind of stick with this um, arm wrestler because it kind of matches the the cake foo lettering. This is a and, great website. I've never heard of this one. <laughs> oh really? Oh, I love Pixlr. I yeah, absolutely great. love it. Okay, so um, there you go. I've got my wording in here. And um, you want to make sure it's white. It usually starts out white, so it's not a problem. But if you come over here, you can see the little checker mark thing. That is the opacity. So you can turn that down as much as you want, you know, as high or low as you want. And that will give you the ability to uh, put your watermark on there with just lettering. So make it as dark or light as you want, that kind of thing. So there you go. That's how you can watermark your images. And then all you have to do is save it and then upload it. You know, it is an extra step. I've heard people complaining that I don't watermark my cakes because it takes too much time, too much effort, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you're, you know, it, it is another step. But yeah. it does. Everybody it does protect says that. You. Everybody says that until their cake goes viral with no logo on it. With no image on it, exactly. And they're just like, I should have taken that two minutes to watermark. Uh huh. Exactly. You know, and I do. I do have some pictures that have gone viral, and yeah. they're out. They're out on that um, jean cake you did. That jean cake went viral, and it was like. It didn't have a watermark on it, right? It didn't. It didn't, and it's shared all the time oh, on like please. Pinterest, in and, and you know, I there's no lead back to my website right. uh, because people take it and they share it, and then they take it and they share it, and they take it and they share it, and it ends up losing that link, mm -hmm. and there's no way for people to get back to the website where there's an actual tutorial on how to do the project, you know. <laughs> so I mean, it's. And of course, I'm not getting credit for the cake that I made. So um, anyway, oh, someone says watermarking is good because if another decorator wants to make a cake similar in style, then they know who to contact to totally get. True. Yep, that is so true. There's there are a lot of times where we're asked to do cakes that um, that we they want to exact. And, you know, we either have to say, um, no, I don't do that, which is okay. But if, if you're okay with copying, you, you want to be able to, you know, get permission from the person who was the original creator of this cake. And so to, to be able to do that is, you know, it's, it's pretty important to 
at least say, hey, I want to do this, and, and it leads them back to you, so it's good. Um, another thing is putting your actual um, website address on there is a good idea. Yeah. Um, I think if you have a, a easily searchable website, you know, like CakeFu, if someone types in CakeFu, they're going to get to CakeFu. Right. Um, but if you have something that's like... Um, Jennifer Special Cakes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Jennifer's Cakes. You know, it, there's going to be a bunch of them out there, and you're not going to be able to get back to the right one. So if you put your website logo or your website address on, on there as part of your watermark, it's going to be a lot easier for people to get back to you. So there you go, watermarking 101 from Liz and Amelia. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, how to get better customers. Do we have time for that? It's like a little. Yeah, I, I think that we do. I mean, we'll have to hurry through it. Right, right. I'll just, <laughs> but I think that we want to cover it. So People ask it's... these questions to me all the time in um, Sugar Geeks, which is my online Facebook group. Um, and... They, it's just like you accidentally, when you're first learning and you're first making cakes, you just kind of do whatever and you don't really have a direction and you um, you just are always, you're always making what people ask you to make. Uh, and I was in that same exact position when I first started cake decorating. I didn't really have designs that I was burning to create. It was, I was just trying to make something that didn't fall over, you know, or that <laughs> I mean, that was really my goal. And so, um, when I wanted to start doing more sculpted cakes, I had a really hard time like finding those clients and um, because uh, in Oregon we actually don't really have like a lot of like high-end cake shops and um, people who do really outlandish cakes, which is great for me because I have a niche, but also nobody knows that those cakes exist around here and I, and these are this is not like my online presence. this is my pay the bills. I want people to order these cakes presents, you know. So how I began uh, sort of getting more customers that order the kind of cakes that I want to make is I had to make those cakes and put them onto my website. Remember I said the website is your most important stepping stone from the public that's outside your front door to ordering cakes from you and actually paying you money. So on my website, I really like focused on featuring um, sculpted cakes that I felt like were popular in the industry at the time and a lot of that was like the, the bust cakes like the heads and the bodies and it's like here's a doctor's face and or here's a princess face or something like that so that people knew that I could do that and I think it was like the fourth thing I made in that style which was a zombie cake and it went it went viral it was like shared in my local newspaper my local magazines uh, on the radio and that kind of stuff and that really was the first thing that sort of like pushed me into a locally known sculpted cake artist and then the second thing I did was a food cake which was, it was like a giant burrito <laughs> and I didn't think at the time that it was like anything that amazing but locally it was a big deal like people really were just like oh this is so crazy a cake that looks like a burrito <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so, always fun <laughs> yeah. so um, uh, it's important to have things on your website that you want to make so if you are trying to get more high-end brides and you want to stop messing around with the low ballers you got to have high-end cakes on your website and that means mm -hmm. investing in some cake dummies investing in time to make sugar flowers and not getting paid anything for it I mean that is a concept that I think people have a hard time grasping but you really have to put that time into making really nice display cakes for bridal shows really nice cakes for your website and you cannot wait for somebody to order it for you that's just mm -hmm. part of you know that process but that's it doesn't so take true. a lot you don't have to make a hundred you know <laughs> just, yeah. just a few I mean just to give them an example of what you do the work that you yeah. do and you know what people um, used to ask me you know when I had my business where can I see your cake portfolio and and I would just say you know what the, the pictures that are on my website are are an example of what I do 
Yeah. And I, I don't show them all of the pictures because, you know, I don't want them to see the simple little three-tier cake that just has a ribbon around the bar. Right. Anybody because can... I don't want them to order that, you yes, know. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, I, I agree 100%, absolutely, completely. If you want to get a high-end um, bride or customer display high-end cakes and it is an investment if you haven't done them for people before but you know every business requires some kind of an investment if you're gonna if you're going to be serious about it be serious about it you know so definitely yeah um, one thing that I might add is make sure that you charge what you're worth yeah. if people are going to be um, coming to you saying I want this, you know, elaborate cake, and you're charging two dollars a serving. They're not going to respect you for being the high-end cake decorator that you want to be. So, you know, just a just a thought. Everyone needs to lift their thinking as far as um, what what you're worth. And and also, I mean, if you're cheap, people like high-end clients don't want to order from cheap cake decorators. They'll mm -hmm. just like. Wow, this person's really cheap. Like their cakes are only two dollars a serving. It's probably not going to be very good. You know, like like people who have money expect to pay a, a decent price for something, and they want. And, and it sounds dumb, but they're they're not going to like brag about buying a two hundred dollar cake. They're going to brag like this cake cost me a thousand dollars, and all these flowers are handmade sugar, and this is you know uh, this lace is all edible. I mean, they want something to talk about. So mm -hmm. it might feel like you're not getting as many clients because you're not as busy. But if you think about it. If you do one cake and get paid a thousand dollars instead of making two cakes and making five hundred dollars a piece, you're working less and making the same amount of money. So it feels like you're not as busy, but you actually are. Uh, you're actually still making the same amount of money, but now yeah. you're getting the higher end clients and stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know, sometimes people are afraid to jump into that because they're like, well. If I don't have a cake this week, then I'm, you know, I'm not making any money. But, you know, if, and so I can't turn down this client that wants this cake for a hundred dollars mm -hmm. because I have to be able to make this cake this week. You right. know, you don't, you don't have to take every cake. You just, you just don't. Um, and I know that's easier said than done when you have a bill coming up that you've got to pay. You know, but you know, just keep that in mind that. You, Go, go for it. Don't, don't be afraid to turn down cakes. That's right. What, um, someone's asking a really good question. Uh, she says, do you keep the pictures online anywhere or do you remove them all? Um, it's up to you, really. But know that if you want people to buy the high-end cakes, I don't know if you want to have the low-end cakes up there. Yeah. So, yeah I, um, I, after a few years, I have like hundreds of cake photos and, he, and it used to be like cakes from last year I was like oh you know I don't really like love those cakes anymore and now I feel like it's like cakes from a couple months ago I'm like mm, I don't yeah. really love that cake anymore. You know what I was going through my cake pictures and oh my gosh I've got to get back into doing some major cakes because all of the cakes when I was looking at them I'm like they've all got the like the not they don't have the crisp edges. They don't oh, have. Know, they're not. They're oh, not correct not cakes. And I'm like, I want to just get rid of all of them and start over again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm so ready to do that. <laughs> yeah. Some of them I like. I liked the design, and I'm just like, I should redo that cake. It's like not quite straight, not quite flat. And oh, speaking of flat, you know, crisp edges. If anybody does not have Jessica Harris's uh, uh, clean and simple cakes, it's her first class uh, on Craftsy. You need to go buy that right now and go. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Those yeah. Edges. <laughs> yeah, definitely staying current with the new trends and and techniques definitely is worth it. Um, let's see, we've got another question. Um, we'll we'll only take a couple of them because I know we're running over already. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, let's see, how did you come up with a logo? Oh. Um. <laughs> 
Well, that was very difficult. I had like six <laughs> of those, six I think, and I had designed them all. And it was very, very difficult for me to decide on a logo that I liked. So I ended up um, having my husband design a logo for me, which I don't think he really enjoyed. Nobody enjoys their wife standing over them going, I don't know if I really like it and make a little bit, you know, I was just, it was horrible for him. But ultimately, I feel like you will have the most success and be the most happy with your logo if you have somebody else design it. So um, I expressed to my husband that I wanted wings in my logo. I don't know why. I am just love, I just love that sort of like design. And I wanted it to be something that could be easily translated to all black or all white. And um, I like steampunk, so I wanted it to sort of have this Victorian kind of old world feel to it. So I wanted like a banner. And, I mean, there was just like these, I didn't really say how I wanted the logo to look. I just kind of explained what I wanted it to feel like. And my husband came up with my current logo design, and I, I love it. It's the one that I use for everything. I did update it recently to give it more of like a hand-drawn chalkboardy look, which... Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with keeping your logo current. It just as well, like you would with your cake photos, keep your logo current, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I've i actually thought about changing up the colors of ours a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm really liking the, the trend. I think I'm going to redo my website. There's nothing wrong with my website other than that it's just not very current, you know? Exactly. Like, exactly. That's what we're working on, too. Old. <laughs> definitely. You definitely want to keep things current. It's really true. Um, yeah. For our website, uh, or for our logo, we went to 99designs.com and just told them uh, basically what we wanted and there are people that go on and they submit their their idea and you can go with you know whoever you want. But Liz Merrick, I, I know you've done logos for people before, right? Right, yeah. I used to do it all the time um, and I, I, love, I love making logos. That was my favorite part of design. And I haven't. I recently had to stop just because the logo process is very in depth. You know, if you think yeah. about it, if you wanted a logo, Amelia, I mean, you got to like explain to me your company philosophy, all of the things that you're trying to represent in this little mark. We have to come together for, for like a consistent, creative, you know, starting point. You know, what what do you want? It playful? Do you want it sophisticated? You know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's like a mind reading uh, process, and that just takes a long, long time. And I'm really short on time these days. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, I spent the last six months of my life just constantly sitting at my computer working on my book. And it just it just came out for pre-order today on Amazon. So Yay, I saw that. That's so, so exciting. exciting. Um, very exciting. And it feels like I that was like my whole life was just consumed by this writing process. So um, I, I had to give up doing logos, and I think I'm going to probably not get back into it. You know, just things are moving on. I, it's, life is liquid, you know. It's just moving in a different direction now, so. Awesome. Also, well, like you're having a baby or something. I don't know. Yeah, something like that, you know. You're, okay. not, you're not busy at all. No. <laughs> Babies aren't a lot of work, are they? Oh, gosh. <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a couple of things that I want to share with you guys first before we go. Um, one is the the link to go and register for the giveaway. Um, let's see, I want to show you guys this really fast. Uh, we are doing a discount for uh, the digital templates. So for the next, um, until, we'll go through Saturday because we're giving away the thing on Friday, so we'll go through Saturday. But for now we have the entire package of all of the digital templates. Um, normally around $50, we're doing for $29.99. So if you have been wanting to get into the digital cake sketching thing and... Which who doesn't? Hello? Yeah, exactly. Who doesn't? Perfect. It's so amazingly cool. So if you haven't um, gotten into it yet and, and have been wanting to, now's the time to order that because uh, it's very, very good discount. It gives you everything that is available right now in the, the digital cake sketching uh, in our marketplace. And... Um, yeah, and you can get that for $29.99. Yay! So there's that. Um, hopefully you guys can see that uh, little package deal. And then um, 
let's see. We also have... You don't see a picture on there. Sorry, no picture for that. <laughs> oh, well. So we also have our... Um, I'm not sure exactly. I, I'm trying. I really am trying. Okay, so this, I believe, is the, the giveaway. So you go and enter the giveaway on that, that link in the chat box. And uh, right where it says check it out, click on that big yellow thing that says check it out. And that's where you guys can go and enter for the giveaway. Yay! And we will be drawing the winners on Friday. Um, so make sure that you are uh, around on Friday and watching. We will uh, post the winners on our Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we'll do another giveaway, and then we'll do another one. And then we'll do another one. We're so this is so fun. This I know. So it's so fun. Fun. I love I love <laughs> this that we're doing this together, and it's a great way to thank everybody for just. I mean, the community is just like your family when you do what we do, you know. So it's just like mm -hmm. such a great way to just be like Christmas for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I kind of feel like I'm like your cake sister because yeah. I mean, we kind of started you know, building things up but about the same time and we've kind of been growing along the same paces all the yeah. way along yeah. and I think that we've done a fairly good job of working with each other and kind of, you know, a I, I don't know. It's it's just been fun. It's been really Don't fun. get better, even so, then. Exactly. Well, and, you know, this, you and I, I think, are a very good example of the fact that, you know, we could be competition and hate each other or whatever because, oh, yeah. you know, People we're both... Like yeah, we're yeah exactly. <laughs> but I mean, it, there there are things that you offer that I offer also, and and things like that. So I mean, they we are in a small way a little bit of competition, but not really because there's enough to go around. It and is. I think that that's something that I working together. Yeah, I think that that's something that um, as a community and as a social group in the cake world, I think we need to understand that and I think it's really good to understand that there's room enough for everybody and we can all get along and we can all play together and we can all be happy. So <laughs> totally, I totally agree. Yeah, well, well thank you for you know being my cake friend. <laughs> and, yeah, and thank you everybody out there for coming and joining us. I'm sorry we went over so far. Um, but uh, I hope you guys got some really good information yep. from, from this. And come to Sugar Geeks or Digital Cake Sketching if you guys have more questions about this kind of stuff. We're always on there. Absolutely. Sugar Geeks is really awesome. <laughs> They're fun. Um, yeah, so again, go like all the pages, uh, subscribe to the pages, uh, register for the email lists, and of course, enter the giveaways. So. And don't forget to buy my book on Amazon. Yes, and pre-order your book. Do you have a link for that? Uh, yeah, I posted it in the chat, but if you just go okay. to Amazon and search for Artisan Cake Company's gu Visual Guide to Cake Decorating, it is in there. Awesome. I'll give you a link to put in the, vid uh, in the video description when this goes on to YouTube. Okay, and I'll post it on my Cake Foo, cake foo page. Yes. So. Yay, so exciting. Congratulations again. <laughs> my other big... Yeah, your other baby. <laughs> you are a busy woman. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, all right. Thank you so much, everybody, and I hope you guys have a great day. Good luck with all of your social media and all of your uh, branding and and all of that. Go so. forth and social media. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Have a good day, and we'll see you another time. Thanks, guys. Bye.